Take three. Hello, people. Here we are today at Titan Machine Tool. Let's see if I can make it through this video. I've already botched three of them. So, actually, I guess this would be take four then, right? So let's see if I can manage to get through this one without screwing it up somehow. I'll show you what we got going on here today. I'm working on these parts again. You saw these in the last video. We put these through holes on the periphery, four holes, 90 degrees apart. And that plug fixture that attaches to the vice jaw. So today, we're putting in these V-notches. Right down through the part. 45 degrees on a side, 90 degrees included. V-nacho. So, as you can see, this part, I did this just to make sure I could create a process. Make sure we can do it, right? We need to be able to get there. So anyways, I did this one first. We'll come back to these saw cuts later. But you can see that V nacho is 90 degrees to this saw cut here, which are 45 degrees off from the periphery holes. So how are we gonna go about doing that today? That V nacho. Let's see. Got a few ways you could do it, right? If it was set up just like this in this orientation, you can use one of these guys. Solid carbide, two flute, 45 degree, 90 degree included. Chamfer mill, drill mill. Cut right through it like this. Meow, meow. You could if you were doing one piece, two pieces. Uh, this guy wouldn't hold up for 50 of them, though. It does not like plowing through solid material like this. It'll do it, but it doesn't like it. It's more designed for drilling or chamfering. I like to use these things to chamfer edges, corners. Could use that. <clears throat> I don't think it's the best option. What would be a better option would be this right here, right? Set up the right angle head on the mill. You get this bad boy right here with the saw. You can growl, 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 cut right through it. That would be a good, a good way to do it. But this saw is not, it's not so sharp anymore. She's a little toasty. I actually did set it up and tried it because I figured this thing would plow right through at one cut. Pow. Finish wasn't so nice. <clears throat> I don't have another one. So what else can we do? Well, since we got it mounted on this fixture here, the plug fixture mounts on this dowel right here, and, ro and you can rotate it on it. And then we have dowel holes in the vise and in the fixture to be able to index the fixture 90 degrees. And the other vice jaw has the dowel holes at the 45 degree increments. So we can index 45 degrees on the other vice jaw. Now, if I would have thought of all of this ahead of time, if I had an epiphany on how to do this job, probably would have just did it all on one jaw. But we're at, you got plan A, you got plan B, plan C. I'm at plan X right now. So let's show you how I went about doing it. So this is a drawing, a sketch right here, okay? This is our sketch right there. See the V at the top right there, all right? So now if we rotate the fixture, we can make the V over there and cut it with a square corner end mill. Let me take you out of the, uh, see if I can unload you from the tripod here without screwing things up. All right, here we go. So. This is what we got. We got a square corner end mill right there. We got this part loaded on that plug fixture over there. We got the holes set at the 90 degree quadrants. 
and we're gonna cut a square corner right through here now. And because that's tipped at a 45 degree, when we rotate that guy back, zip, so that it's up top, and then we cut the saw cut afterwards, like that. But we'll come back to the saw cut later. So we'll mill this nacho right now, which is just gonna be a, a square corner cut. But like I said, when you rotate this guy back up to the 90 degree point, it's a V. Five flute, five flute solid carbide, Haas end mill, 1700 RPMs. Here we go, we're gonna rapid the approach here. Go. First pass, I think, was seven and a half inches a minute. This is 10 inches a minute. You probably can rip through this a lot faster, but a lot faster. But I don't want to burn up my tools. The setup's pretty rigid. I'm going to play some chips. If I was running this on the three axis, I would take a finished pass on the Z as well. So that's a 2000s finished pass on this inside wall. Okay, just gets out of the way. So there's our square cut. Right through. All right, so now I'm no math genius, but I had to figure out, you know, when you put this on the plug gauge, obviously you know where zero is because you sweep, you sweep this to find your X zero. And my Y, which is really not that important because I'm not holding any real tolerancing in the Y right now. But you know, you edge find the back here because that's where the datum is from this back piece right there. So my Y. But where is this? Where is this line out in space here? And where is this? You have to figure out what that is. So, like I said, I'm no math genius. I actually barely passed geometry in, in high school. I probably should have paid more attention knowing that I was gonna do machine shop work, but nonetheless, uh, it was first period, so I had a difficult time getting the first period. But anyways, uh, I should have paid more attention in geometry and I didn't, so I am no math wizard. So to, for me to do the math to figure that out, yeah, it's not gonna happen. So this is what I did. This was easy, we'll come over here at the machine here all right let's take a look at the screen all right so that's my two and a half inch round part there's my v-notch up at the top okay so there's a dimension from the center to the theoretical point of the v-nacho 
which is 1.1. So if it's two and a half inch round material, the radius is 1.250, right? And if it's 1.1 from the center to the theoretical point, that leaves 150 from the theoretical point to the tangency of the radius. So that's 150 deep, and because it's 45, 90 degree included, it's, it's split the same on both sides. So you, got, you know that thing's 150 deep, so it's 300 wide. That V at the top is 300 wide. So you could program that to cut that and know where those numbers are just based on that given information, right? So we're minus 150 at, I mean, technically the tangency right there is not at, it's not at 1250. 1250 would be at the tangency of the center line. But for programming it, I, I just did it like that anyways. So you program that out right there, just like what it would be. And then there's a rotate feature. See, we got a rotate feature right there. Right, so I rotated it. It lets you, it asks, I'll show you what it asks for. So I rotated that milling pattern over there. So let's look at the rotate feature. What's it asking me? It, I'm telling it to rotate. See, the, these events right there are the first move, are the first actual programs to cut that V. So I'm going to rotate the first V that I programmed. So it's asking me, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna rotate event number three and four. Okay, steps, sorry, they call them steps. The prototracks events, I get confused all the time. I got a prototrack too, so. Steps, I'm sorry, step three and four. And then it wants to know the center of rotation and it's X, Y, zero, zero. And then it wants to know how many degrees, minus 45 degrees, how many times you wanna do that? One time. So I use that event and it put that up right there. That's a pretty powerful event actually, because if I needed more of those V notches, I can just go back in, rotate, and how many do I wanna do? I wanna change it to six of them. Boom, look at, now we got them going all around the whole periphery of the pot. But anyways, for what I was doing, we only want one, okay? One rotation at 45 degrees, and it puts it there. But that doesn't tell me what the, Numbers are. I need to know the numbers. Where is this line in space off of the center line? Where is this line in space off the center line? Because I gotta be able to inspect this to make sure I know where it is, right? So it's got this other feature. This feature is awesome. I go on the rotate and see how it's blue. So I know that's, that's the event right there. Blue event, rotate. So now I'm gonna come down here and in my step functions, I got this feature called explode. I'm gonna use explode, and it's gonna actually change just that rotate feature to the actual absolute lines, the dimensions for those lines to where it is. So now I know where that line is in space, right there, all right? That blue line, where is that? Let's take a look. X, 0.7778. So that's where that line is, the X coordinates to cut that is 778. Look, and it just so happens the other one from the other way too because it's 45 equal distant, 45 degree, 90 degree cut, boom, so they're the same. So seven, 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 and eight tenths. So we go in here and look. So now we know from the center line from here to there is seven, 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 and eight tenths. And we know that the center line from here to there is seven, 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 and eight tenths. So now I can come back over here. Knowing that sweeping this pot, the center line of this is X zero, I can program that tool to cut at that coordinate, 0 0.777 and 8 tenths. And then same deal here. Now, obviously, I'm not programming that because that's, uh, you know, that would be a Z coordinate this way. But now I know where it is so I can inspect it to make sure it is where it needs to be. Now you could touch off the tool, you could put some dicum up here, you could bring your Z down, you could touch that right there and call it the, you know, the radius of the part. You know, two and a half inch, so you got 1.250. You could call that plus 1.250. And then you could come over here and come down. If you do the math, 
because it's seven, seven, eight, seven, seven, seven and eight tenths from the center line right here. So if you do the math, 1.250 minus seven, seven, seven and eight tenths, you know what it is. So then you can touch off there and move down the difference. This is actually, a, the stock's a little bit undersized. So the radius is 1.249 and the difference is 471 from here to here. So that's how I check this. I'll show you over here on the surface plate. So both, there's a couple different ways I check it to make sure that it's con consistent. You know, you work alone, you got nobody to bounce this off of. So you gotta be able to uh, make sure you get the same information, multiple ways of inspecting. All right, let's see if I can reload you in the tripod here without screwing everything up. This is where it goes bad every time. All right, I think we're gonna make it through this one. So now I have an optical comparator too, so I go over the optical comparator and I can check the V. I can do some other inspecting techniques to make sure they confirm the numbers I get over here. So, but anyways, this is how I'm gonna check this part right here. All right. I got my stack of gauge blocks. I did the math, like I said. 2.498 is the diameter, divided by two. 1.249 is the radius, minus the 777 and 8 tenths. Basically, we got 470 right here is the difference. Right. Now this isn't the best way of checking it. You know, I got a very, very minimal amount of land here to sit these V-blocks on. I even offset the V-blocks a little bit to cantilever the weight to try to keep it from wanting to roll off. But anyways, that's how I can do it. So I can bring my indicator over. You can't see my dial, but it's zeros. I zero on that. And I come over and I zero on that. And like I said, you can't see my dial, but I'm minus two. So that's good enough for that. And the way I orient this pot right here to be able to line these guys up, you can probably see what I got going on here. I have another drill blank clamped in the V-block. I sat it in there so the bottom does not protrude past the banking surface of the V-block. Clamp that bad boy in there. So then we take it. So we checked that side already, we're gonna check the other side. I can use it for both ways now. Now I'll rotate it, flip it over, find the hole, and spit on it first. Find it easier that way. And put that in, and I sit the part in the big V block. Now as you can see, it's not oriented yet, so we don't have that V notch timed at 45 degrees. But when we let this other V block make contact with the surface plate, we can square it up to make sure that the pin is vertical. Now that aligns this part to time that surface to be able to inspect. So same deal, then I'll just turn it around like that, bring it around on this side. Put my V-blocks up there. I mean my gauge blocks. Bring it around, check it, zero. And I'll slide these bad boys over to the indicator. I'm plus one and a half on this one. So I'm getting a subtle amount of variation being that these, uh, that's just two and a half inch round cold rolled Bostock. It's not like TGP or anything. So it's not most perfectly round. So I'm getting a little bit of concentricity issues. It's not quite perfect. So that's where I'm getting plus or minus two on this. Changes a little bit when we load it on the fixture. But I think that's satisfactory for what we got going on here. And then to confirm these numbers to make sure everything's jiving, I take this guy over, I take these over to the optical comparator and I can inspect them over there too. If this video wasn't so long already, I'd go over and show you how I do them over there. But So that's what we got going on here today at Titan Machine Tool. I hope this video was interesting. Like I said, it took me four takes to get it. 
We managed to get through it on the fourth take. So thank you for watching and have a good day.